Welcome to the Elevate Everyday podcast. Today, we've got a nutritionist as our guest on here. We've got Andy Coffey. She's already basically diagnosed me with adrenal fatigue, <laughs> and I already got a supplement from her. Um, but yeah, she's got like a master's in science and nutrition, super knowledgeable, runs her own you know practice where she helps her patients with different like metabolic conditions and stuff like that. So we're going to definitely dive into a lot of that on this one. But really excited. First and foremost, I appreciate you, Andy, for coming on. So thank you. And uh, yeah, so first question I have is, you know, kind of piggybacking off of, you know, what I was saying with your background, what you you help a lot of your patients with, like, when people say, you know, a lot of people say I have a slow metabolism, right? Like when, when people say slow metabolism, right. like what what is most commonly going on there? Like, what's what's the usual cause of that? There can be a lot of causes of slow metabolism. It can be as simple as just being older, because as we age, we lose muscle mass and that slows down our metabolism. However, there are other medical metabolic conditions that can cause a slower metabolism, such as having thyroid dysfunction, adrenal dysfunction, which the adrenal um, I know a lot of people don't really understand the adrenals, but the adrenals are a couple of glands that are on top of the kidneys and they release the stress hormones. Mm -hmm. um, so if um, you're having problems, let's say with weight loss because of a slow metabolism, one of the reasons can be because your body is releasing too much of one of those stress hormones, okay. predominantly cortisol. Right. Other okay. reasons of slow metabolism can be uh, things like um, estrogen dominance, which is a hormone dysfunction, or it can be um, something related to insulin issues, which is another hormone condition, um, or it can be as simple as um, somebody being on the wrong medication and it's okay. slowing down their metabolism. Okay. And so, yeah, so obviously the medication thing, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's basically... Well. Yeah, we, we can we can see where that's coming from. But with with the adrenal um, symptoms and, and, you know, with like you said, with the hormone stuff, like what what causes that to cause that? Like what what are people doing that's that's making that happen? Um, often it's just really unmanaged stress and it can be um, either physical stress to the body or it could be mental stress okay. or it can be as simple as not getting enough sleep. That is a stressor to the body, or it can be overtraining somebody yep. who is working out six, seven days a week, really, really hard. That's yep. going to impact the adrenals. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And we, we were talking about it on our initial chat before the, before the podcast. Yeah. Like I, I train really hard. <laughs> I'm training for a powerlifting competition right now. Um, so, so Andy actually already sent me a supplement that's going to help me with my adrenals, like make sure, um, I don't have adrenal fatigue and kind of help with that. So that's super helpful. I appreciate that. Um, and then another one that I, that I hear like a lot of women talk about this, um, it, and you know, men too, but this, this is the most common one that I hear as a, as a fitness coach that people are able to figure out what's going on. Like, this is what I feel like most people have told me why they have a slow metabolism um, is the thyroid, like having issues with the thyroid. So um, what's the most common cause with that? Like what's going on with the thyroid? Why, why does that seem like a very common one? The thyroid. So um, again, it could be a simple reason why the thyroid is not functioning properly. Um, for example, if somebody's not getting enough iodine in their mm -hmm. diet, that will cause thyroid dysfunction. Okay. If they um, are iron deficient, for example, which is very common with the vegetarian population, then the, uh, the thyroid cannot functionally, can't uh, function properly. Okay. So um, it could be simple reasons like that, or it can be more complex. It can be that they um, have an autoimmune condition, um, which is called um, Hashimoto's. Mm -hmm. um, that's where the immune system attacks the thyroid gland. And so the thyroid stops working as well. The thyroid um, does absolutely impact our metabolism. And so if there is thyroid dysfunction, 
the person is going to definitely have a slower metabolism. And it is really, really difficult to lose weight yeah. when your thyroid is not functioning properly. Yeah. Um, one of the problems that I see is that uh, there's a big difference between optimal thyroid range and normal. Okay. So big, big difference. And okay. a lot of times people will have symptoms of thyroid dysfunction, but their doctor will tell them that their thyroid is fine. Mm. Okay. So it's not necessarily fine. Um, right. it, it might not be optimal for them. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's like on, on paper, the doctor's like, yeah, well you're in the normal range, but you're saying like going from normal to optimal thyroid health can make a big difference with your weight loss and everything. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, there's sometimes a problem with, um, the thyroid where there's, um, there's inactive thyroid and active thyroid. Sometimes there's a problem where the inactive thyroid isn't converting to the active thyroid. And so that's a problem that sometimes has to be addressed as well. Okay. And, and so I know you already said, um, you know, iodine, or maybe there's certain things people are deficient in that's, that's causing this. Um, what, you know, what can people actually start doing? Like, what do you, what do you do with your clients, you know, first and foremost to, to figure out like how, how to figure out what's going on. And then when, once you do that, like what, what's kind of common that you do with, with some of your clients or patients, um, to, to turn things around, make things optimal. I do um, a full thyroid panel because I need that information. Um, okay. What that includes is not, most doctors will just do TSH. That's okay. thyroid stimulating hormone. You actually need TSH, T3, free T3, free T4, and um, reverse T3. So I do a full panel to see what's going on. Because if you just do TSH, that's only part of the picture. Okay. You need to see the whole picture. So from there, um, I will get to the root of the problem, whether it's they're not sleeping well, or even they've been on a really low calorie diet for a long time, that'll affect the thyroid. Yeah. Uh, so I will address that root problem. Mm -hmm. And then I'll make sure that their nutrient, um, their diet is nutrient dense. So they're getting the nutrients they need for thyroid function. Yeah. And then depending on what's going on, I might put them on a thyroid support supplement. Okay. Gotcha. Um, cool. And that one, one thing I wanted to go back to that you said yeah. early on is, uh, like just as we age, our metabolism slows down, we lose muscle, like how important, you know, I, I want you to speak on this. Cause I, I talked to my clients about muscle and how important that is for the metabolism. Like, what can you say about the science and, and how important, like having muscle mass, um, to your metabolism, how, how important is that? It's crucial. Um, yeah. when I was in my graduate program, I actually did, a research study on what's more effective for fat loss, cardio yeah. or strength training. Yeah. Okay. And it was hands down, hands mm. down, both. Okay. I, I thought it was going to be strength training, but yeah. the research supports that a combination of strength training and cardiovascular is the most effective for fat loss. Yeah. Uh, you could do cardio until you're blue in the face. If you're not building muscle, mm -hmm. you're you're going to have a really, really hard time losing fat. Right. Yeah. So, and, and speak on why too, because I, I, you know, I've got my own reasons. I, I, I always tell my clients on, on why you want to prioritize like resistance training, not just doing a bunch of cardio to lose a bunch of fat, which a lot of people believe that's the way to lose weight and everything. So I, I want you to speak on it, kind of get a different perspective um, from you on that. Yeah, so um, muscle is more metabolically active. So as you build muscle, lean body mass, it's going to allow your body to burn more calories, not only at rest, but just in everyday function. Right. So building that muscle is going to help you lose weight. Yeah. So that's the main reason why it's so important. Yeah. One, one thing, and I'm kind of throwing a curveball at you here, That's Andy, okay. but, but I just read this book called burn. Have you heard of that book? I haven't. Burn? Okay. So it's super interesting that they were like these anthropo, man, I, I don't even know the word anthropologist, whatever, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to I say. I think I can even pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they're studying this, this tribe of, of these people in Africa that like walk all the time. They're very active, you know, they're, um, and they don't, 
eat a whole lot, right? They're, they're not in like a caloric surplus all the time. Um, but anyway, like the whole preface of this book was how our bodies adapt when we're in like a large caloric deficit and, and, and we adapt to exercise and the whole like thing they were getting across in this whole book um, with a lot of different examples, not only just that tribe, but like with athletes, you know, endurance athletes, a lot of different examples and studies about how exercise actually isn't like going to help you lose weight as far as like, just it's, it's not going to make it so that you can burn calories and like lose weight. Like the diet side is much more important. Obviously there's a lot of benefits of exercise. And like you said, like building more muscles in the long term going to help you burn, burn more calories at rest. But they, they were just talking about how much like the nutrition side of things, like controlling the diet is, is really how you're going to lose weight. Um, so I just wanted to get your opinion on that. Like, you know, and, and everyone says it's, it's mostly diet. Right. Um, and I, I just want to get your opinion on, you know, kind of that book, um, uh, just after I told you the, the, the preface of it and like, what, what's your opinion of like how important exercise versus diet? You know, um, it's funny you say that. Cause I literally just yesterday wrote, um, in my newsletter that I have, um, the, t- the title was you can't, you can't out exercise a bad diet. Right. <laughs> it's funny you're bringing that up because I literally just wrote that yesterday yeah. and it's true. It's yeah. 90% diet. Um, yeah. Exercise is so important for so many reasons. Yeah. And um, the, the thing is, if you could lose weight without exercise, if you were in a calorie deficit, right. it's really hard to lose weight with just exercise. Right. Right. You have to be in a calorie deficit. There's no yeah. way around it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I, I agree though. It's like, but there's, that doesn't mean like ignore the exercise side, right? Cause there's so many benefits, yeah. you know, building the muscle. It's basically like helping you feel better. And, and also I, I like to even use this term. It's like building passive fat loss for the future. Cause, cause you're building that muscle. That's going to burn more calories at rest. Um, but what, what's some of the, the science and more behind, like how, how can we, exercise like what's the most efficient obviously we said combination of cardio and resistance training um but but what's the best exercise to improve the metabolism um from what i've researched it's hit training okay that's what i've researched is the most effective and you get the most bang for your butt yeah. but is that the most bang, <laughs> bang for your buck? <laughs> it's <laughs> that, early this morning. <laughs> I know it is early. Um, so yeah, that's what um that's what I've done in, in my research is found that the hit training is the most effective. I you yeah. might have a different opinion on that, but um that's kind of, that's where I stand from what I've researched today. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, and I, I think too, like just resistance training, but keeping the heart rate up the whole time, yeah. like doing supersets. I think that's super effective. Okay, cool. But well, I'll steer it back around towards nutrition here. So, um, you know, what one thing I'm interested on, and I haven't found much or looked into much research on it. So I, I'd like to get your opinion and expertise on it. So with gut health, like what's going on there? Like how, how is this affecting us? Like if we have poor gut health and how can we improve our gut health? Great question. So the gut houses our immune system. So if our gut is out of balance, you're putting yourself at risk for autoimmune disease and just not not having um, the right neurotransmitters because they're um, they're made in our gut as well. The neurotransmitters. Um, So it can really impact weight loss as well when our gut is in balance. So simple things you can do, like the most obvious to me on this one is just going to the bathroom regularly. A lot of people, people are constipated and they're not detoxifying properly. Hmm. So it's important to get enough fiber in your diet, enough water so that you're able to have those bowel movements. And there's different supplements that you can use too, um, to help with that, if that's a problem for you. And I would just recommend speaking to a nutritionist about that. Um, if the additional fiber, um, doesn't help and the water doesn't help. So that, that is like number one for gut health. The other thing is to have a diverse 
population of benef beneficial bacteria. So I see a lot of people, they just randomly pick up a probiotic and they're on it for years. Yep. And that's gonna that's gonna be problematic because your body's gonna become resistant to those strains hmm. because that's all you're taking. I recommend changing probiotics out every three to six months because okay. different strains have different therapeutic benefits. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I didn't know that. So that that's when you hear people. Is that basically when people say diversify? Like yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So so yeah. So I I I drink kefir. I don't know if you. If you're familiar, yeah. So I drink yeah. kefir for my probiotics. So you're saying like I shouldn't just that's like I'm not just covering all my bases. I should switch it up every every couple months or so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. Because you want a, a, there's so many different species when it comes to probiotics, and you yeah. want your gut to be exposed to different strains. Okay, interesting. Um, and by improving gut health, um, you know, obviously you said immune system. It's a big big factor there. Um, what other benefits will we see by like, you know, adding in pr div diversified probiotics and, and improving our gut health and, and everything and adding fiber to and water? Like what, what sort of benefits will people see from doing that? Well, if your gut is in balance, you're going to have symptoms like bloating, um, gas, um, just uncomfortable symptoms. So that would be one of the benefits that you would definitely see is an yep. improvement in that area. Okay. Um the um the thing that that um, concerns me the most is when the gut is imbalanced well is the risk that it puts a person at developing an autoimmune disease if they're genetically predisposed. Okay. So um if you have it's called intestinal permeability or leaky gut. If you have that, you are really high risk for an autoimmune condition. So I would say that that's one of the biggest benefits is preventing an yeah. autoimmune condition to happen because even if you're genetically predisposed to a genetic condition, if you will have a healthy gut, it will not present in your body. It will right. not get triggered. Okay. Okay. For sure. So yeah, that's, that's something I've been thinking about because I hear people that have these like bad gut symptoms. I'm like, man, I want to avoid that at all costs if I can. So I'm starting to try to pay attention to that because um, it seems miserable, like just having, yeah, like leaky gut or just all this, all these different symptoms. So, okay. Right. Interesting. There, there's even, um, I, I see a lot of times, um, and this, I, I've had so many people I've worked with that come to me and they're, they're constantly bloated, especially after they eat protein. So mm. they're like, yeah, I can't, I can't really eat meat because it bloats me. Mm. Um, they have like a ton of gas, a ton of just like their stomach is huge. Oof. And what it usually is nine times out of 10 is low stomach acid. Okay. It's, it's interesting. So, and it's a simple fix. You just have to take some, um, a supplement, um, a, um, like an enzyme to okay. help give your body produce that, produce that stomach acid so that you're able to digest those foods. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. That there's with, with a lot of these things, it's just like, once you diagnose it, once you figure out what's going on, it's like a pretty simple <laughs> thing that you can add in to fix things. So, right. Um, so the big thing is like, make sure you figure out what's going on, right? Like go yeah, it's someone. getting to the root cause and not right. just putting a bandaid on it. Right. Okay. So the other thing you, you mentioned briefly is, you know, hormones being a big factor. So what are some, you know, commonly overlooked ways, uh, you know, to optimize hormones naturally? Oh, that's a great question. So um, I would say, and you'll, whenever anybody works with me, they'll hear about sleep because sleep yeah. is the foundation for wellness. It's I'm um, the same way. My, my clients are probably like, we're talking about sleep again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's so and big. it is, it's the foundation of wellness. Yeah. If you are not rested, your body is not going to work right. right. It's going to disrupt your hormones. It's going to cause weight gain, you're going to feel like crap. So you're not going to want to exercise. So sleep is number one when it comes to balancing hormones naturally. Mm -hmm. The other thing is having a balanced diet, getting quality protein, getting some good carbohydrates, getting healthy fats, which a lot of people are really lacking in their diet, but without yeah. healthy fats, your body cannot make hormones. Yeah. Oh, it's really important to get those in the diet. And then I would say the other 
number one way to balance hormones naturally is to manage stress, yeah. um, which is easier said than done, right. but learn how to meditate, um, you know, things like that, you know, even like five, 10 minutes a day doing a guided meditation will help reduce those um, stress hormones, the, the cortisol, and that will help all your hormones. Okay. Awesome. Great tips. And, and then appropriate supplements when, when, when it's, you know, needed. Yeah. Yeah. And so on the supplement side of things, um, I know ashwagandha is one that, that helps with that. I think that's even in the supplement that you mm -hmm. sent me, I believe. So, um, other than that, other than ashwagandha, what, what other common, uh, supplements are good for, for like stress, um, you know, relieving stress and, and optimizing hormones. Uh, there's a lot of different ones. Rhodiola is a good one. Um, uh, there's some different mushrooms that, that are good for helping, uh, reduce stress. So it, it just depends. Um, like if I have somebody who has a low morning cortisol, then I might put them on licorice root because that helps boost the morning cortisol. But I would be, I would caution anybody with, um, supplementing like that because like licorice root for example could cause high blood pressure so right. if you're are not it, it can raise high blood pressure so if you do have high blood pressure you would not want to be on licorice root okay. so supplements it's very important to talk to somebody who knows how to recommend right. them appropriately yeah for sure don't don't self-diagnose yourself and just start taking all these yeah. you know supplements like figure out <clears throat> make sure that things are healthy and you're talking with a professional for sure Okay. Yeah. I'm very minimal when it comes to supplements that I, what I recommend for my clients, you know, I, I just really recommend a few, um, for like the bulk of my clients, but you know, for sure, if you've got these kind of specific issues that you're noticing going on, um, it's great to kind of figure out what that is and, and figure out if you can take a supplement to, to help with that. Um, cause I, I strongly believe in, in that and the power of what that can do. So right. for sure. But yeah. So um, you know, obviously calories determine weight loss, right? If we're in a calorie deficit, we're going to lose weight. If we're in a calorie surplus. We're going to gain weight. Uh, but, and, we, and we've already talked about quite a bit of other factors, hormones, gut health, thyroid, the type of exercise you're doing. Um, but what that I haven't asked are, are some other common factors, uh, that will help people lose weight if they're struggling with just the calories in calories out. So, you know, yes, it's calories in versus calories out, but it's also quality of calories. Mm -hmm. So um, let's say a person wants to do um, an ice cream diet. <laughs> <laughs> so if they only had 500 calories a day of ice cream, they would lose weight. Right. However, there's going to be consequences to that. And the consequence right. of that is all the sugar from that ice cream is going to impact insulin levels. Yeah. This person is more than likely going to develop um, what's called insulin resistance. Yeah. And they're just going to gain all the weight back. Right. Um, the quality of the nutrients is essential. Yeah. And getting um, the right nutrients, like I'll give you another example. Um, I see this a lot with vegetarians. Sorry, vegetarians, I'm not picking on you, but actually more vegans. Um, you can do a vegan diet. You can do a vegetarian diet, healthy, just work with a professional. Right. But a common thing I see with vegans is they are carnitine deficient. Mm. And carnitine is an amino acid that's needed to uh, shuttle fat and break down fat for energy. So if a person is deficient in carnitine, they're going to have a really time losing, losing fat. Right. So that's another example of the importance of getting the right um, quality of nutrients, sure. not just any calories from anywhere. For sure. Uh, the other thing is the importance of protein. This is a big one. I see um, most people just don't eat enough protein yeah. and protein helps stimulate your metabolism and it also helps with satiety. So um, people tend to be more satisfied with their meals and mm -hmm. 
that tends to eat to lead to less binge eating and less snacking is getting enough quality protein. And then um, hydration, that's the other one. Metabolic processes cannot happen in the body if you're dehydrated. It's right. they're gonna be really, really slow, which is going to make you have a slow metabolism. Yeah. Okay. Those are some For common sure. things. Yeah. Well a lot of stuff you're saying is stuff I say to my clients. So it's good to get a professional nutritionist <laughs> that, that agrees with me on a lot of this stuff. So it's good. Um, and I'm, I'm really interested in the, the carnitine, uh, deficiency for, for vegans, because I have a few vegan clients. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm going to suggest that, that they get that, you know, figured out, you know, see if they can test their, their carnitine levels, see if that's something they're deficient in so that we can make sure we're paying attention to that. So that's very, very helpful there. Okay. Yeah. It's awesome. very, very common with vegans. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, what we do on the Elevate Everyday podcast, every episode for every guest is I always ask like, what's one thing you would like to challenge the listeners to take action on right after listening to this? Because, you know, we're, we're not just about listening, right? It's about putting this stuff into practice right away. So what would you like to challenge the listeners to take action on right away after they listen to this podcast? I would say if um, a listener is not feeling well or is having resistant weight loss mm -hmm. to either reach out to me or another functional medicine nutritionist and get labs done to see what's going on to make yeah. sure there isn't any of these underlying causes okay. and to make sure that their labs are optimal. Yeah. So um, it's not normal to be tired all the time. Um, it's yeah. not normal to, you know, be like taking naps at three o'clock in the afternoon. That That's not normal. Right. So there is something going on. Um, if, you know, you're a listener and you're eating well, you're tracking your calories, um, you have a balanced diet, you're exercising and the scale is not budging, um, okay. make sure you get your body composition tested to um, ensure that um, nothing's changing because things yeah. can change with lean body mass and fat mass. But yeah. if nothing's changing, reach out to somebody that um, has a functional medicine background like myself. Absolutely. Yeah, that's couldn't have said it like, man, I, I'm, I'm so glad some of the things you're saying are just so in line with, with how I handle things. Cause I always, you know, if the scale is not moving, I'm like, well, let's get the body fat percentage check. Like, let's make sure that we're not just putting on muscle, losing fat because the scales not always telling the whole story. But if you do figure out that your body fat percentage isn't budging as well, and we're just like, you know, we're kind of at the standstill, then for sure, let's, let's figure out what else is going on. Cause I, I have had clients where, you know, just we're, we're tracking our calories and our macros, like everything's down to a T, you know, we're hitting our workouts and the scale's not moving. Even the body fat isn't moving like we want it to. Um, and then there's, there's something else going on. Right. So we, when you figure that out, it's, it, you know, sometimes you, people can be frustrated. They're like, man, why do I have it? But it's awesome when you figure out things like that, because then you, you can get to the root of the issue, you know, improve on that. And then, and then you'll see more progress. So right. um, awesome. Very yeah, cool. It, 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 changer. You just have to figure out why that's happening. Right. Right. Um, so don't, don't just go through life guys. If you, if you're noticing, like, like Annie was saying that like you're tired or like things aren't moving in the direction that you want. And you're, you're trying to control the variables. Like we were talking about with exercise and nutrition, like figure out, you know, get a, get a blood panel, figure out what's going on. Um, get, get to the root of the issue so that you can improve it and keep moving forward, making progress. Um, and uh, one question I have for you, Annie, like, uh, do you do things all online? Like if, say, if someone's not near you, um, are you able to, to help people, you know, figure out what's going on get labs, all that type of stuff? It depends on which state I am a licensed nutritionist, but I'm not licensed in every single state. Hmm. Uh, in some states you don't have to be licensed. So it just depends on the state the person lives in. But, hmm. um, I do, um, work in many, many states, like, Arizona doesn't have a licensure law. Texas doesn't have a licensure law, but some states do. So I would just say, reach out to me and I'll let you know um, okay. if I can work work with that person or not. Okay, cool. And I, I live in Texas. So, um, and a lot of my clients live in Texas. So guys, reach out to Andy. Where, where can they find you? Like, is the website you want to send them to? Or Yeah, yeah. Um, my website is Balance Nutrition with Andy. And that's Andy with an I. Cool. Balance nutrition with Andy.com. Sweet. Yep. 
Awesome, Andy. Um, well, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. I, I think that's going to be super valuable for a lot of people. It's, I've already learned a lot <laughs> talking to you. So I'm, 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 and I'm going to probably do a deep dive, ask you some more questions later on as I'm, I'm looking more into this stuff, but um, appreciate you guys. Like we said, put this stuff into action right away. You know, don't just listen on the Elevate Everyday podcast. You know, if, if you're noticing some of these symptoms of maybe poor gut health, poor thyroid health, poor, um, or, you know, not optimal hormones, you know, figure out what's going on there um, and, and take the steps towards improving so that you make sure everything's optimal um, and the effort that you're putting in, you know, you're reaping the rewards and getting, reaping the, <laughs> reaping the, the rewards and getting the results that you want, right? So take action, guys. Um, you know, on the Elevate Everyday podcast, that's what we're all about, taking action. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I appreciate you once again, Andy. And in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.